What's up guys, this is Brian, I run TurfMechanic.com. Today, I'm gonna be acidifying my soil. But I'm not going to be applying soil sulfur. All right, lots of people know that if you've got high soil pH, sulfur is one of the best things to put down on the lawn to lower the pH. As you can see back behind me, I've got a nice little green patch. That's a patch of grass that I woke up from winter in the middle of February, long before the rest of my grass. The rest of the grass is still lagging behind because I haven't done anything significant to it. Here, you can see on the ground, I've got this nice little brown haze in this funny little pattern. Uh, that is peat moss. So I have core aerated the lawn. If you're a follower of this channel, you know that already. I've core aerated the lawn and now I'm applying peat moss to the soil surface and I'm going to be brushing it into the cores. Now peat moss is naturally acidic. There's really no NPK rating for it and so it's not going to nourish the soil so to speak but it is going to be uh, kind of this carbon-based matter that I can get down into the soil cores that were pulled. Uh, initially, peat moss will uh, provide this acidic punch to the soil, which should lower my soil pH uh, quickly, but not for a particularly long time. Let's say, for instance, a year from now, the effects of this peat moss is probably going to be completely gone. Now, in addition to putting this peat moss down, I'm going to be applying a little bit of an acidifying fertilizer. Now, it's a little early in the season to apply fertilizer to get the grass to grow, um, although my grass is starting to wake up from dormancy, it can grow. I'm going to be applying it really for the immediate acidic punch. So I'm going to be applying it at a very low rate. Let's get at it. I got a question not that long ago about what broom I use to do this. This is the style that I use. I inherited this broom when we moved into this house. I never actually bought it. All right, I'm gonna take a break here to breathe and I'll talk to you for a second. Uh, that's after I brush the whole thing. You can tell from far away, you can't really see any of the peat moss anymore. Under the peat moss, I had some worm castings. There's a reason why I stopped right there. I'm literally out of worm castings. I got to go to the store and get some more. But here you go. Take a look at this. Can you see any cores, any holes in the ground? I'm standing here with my naked eye. And I can't see any. When you take that brush... There's my shadow. Look at me. So unprofessional. Let's see. I mean, there's nothing. When you run a core aerator, here, take a look at this. Look at this. You see? There's holes all over the place. When we go and we put the top dressing down, you can see the holes. Let's just use this as a little like experiment spot. We can see holes right here. Now I'm gonna brush that one little spot and then we'll look at it again. All right, here we go. I can see holes, I can see holes where I didn't but over here where I brushed, I don't think I got to that one. But over here, there's one, but you can't see it very well. All of the material, there, I think I missed that one. These are actually bigger cores than over there. Over there, I manually core aerated. Over here, it was a mechanical machine, so the holes are actually bigger. So I didn't go that far, but the holes fill in with this material. What we want to do is we want to get this material crunched up and in the holes. 
Ain't nobody got time to do that. But even though it's a lot of effort, we can spread the stuff on the ground and then brush it in. Yeah, see, I'm still winded. Um, but anyway, you can get through a good chunk of lawn in a weekend if you want to do this. Really, I could do the whole lawn in a day if I didn't have kids inside uh, that need me. So I'm going to be going in and out and doing this in little chunks. That's why I did my corner over there. Uh, video last week, I did this whole section. Right now, I'm kind of filling in the gaps and moving around through here. Uh, I'll work my way around the house. It won't take me more than a few days, so long as I actually have the product on hand. But anyway, I'm not going to record the whole thing, but this is basically what I'm doing with spreading the peat moss. Now, I have an entire video about lowering the pH of your lawn. There's five distinct ways to do it. Currently, I'm doing two of those ways. These are the early season ways to do it. Um, up in uh, your upper right is going to be a link over to the video where I discuss all five ways, why you would use them and when, uh, how they work, and how long of a duration they last. Uh, this is my method for doing early spring immediate pH change. Now, the whole point of this video is to say I'm lowering the pH of my lawn without using soil sulfur. I am not using soil sulfur today. However, down the road, not too long down the road, maybe in about a month or so, I am going to be putting some soil sulfur down. The reason for that is because the peat moss does not need to break down to change the soil uh, pH. And the Imodium, I almost said Imodium, like Imodium AD, um, the Ammonium Sulfate, which is the uh, synthetic uh, fertilizer. It's a, basically you put the fertilizer down, it waters in, and it's immediately plant available. You don't need microbial life to activate it. It just is. That releases acid into the soil once it goes into the plant, and that's what acidifies the soil. But the thing is, we're so early in the season, I don't want to heavily fertilize my lawn. So I'm going to only be putting down a very light dose of that a little bit later today. Maybe I'll get it on footage. But anyway, I just want to cover that. Make sure to watch the soil pH video, like the lowering uh, the soil pH video, for a lot more detail. I'm not going to go into all of the detail again, because there's a lot of science in that one um, to explain how it all works. I'm going to finish getting the peat moss down in at all the cores um, over the next, I don't know, 24 hours or so. But while I got time right now, I'm going to go ahead and put down my ammonium sulfate. Now, bag rated as this is just to keep it brief here this is water soluble and immediately plant available this is as fast a nitrogen as you could possibly put on the lawn it's synthetic i don't usually use synthetics but this is also the fastest uh the fastest acting acidifying fertilizer that you can get now urea will do it too but it won't do it as much and it will take a little bit of microbial life to get it going this is immediate, and that's the only reason I'm using it. Bag rate on this is 15 pounds for 3,000 square feet. I am not putting this down to fertilize the lawn, so I don't really want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half for my purposes here, just to have an immediate small effect on the pH of my topsoil. So 15 pounds for 3,000 is 5 pounds for 1,000 square feet. I'm going to cut that in half. I'm going to do two and a half pounds for a thousand square feet. I've got 2,500 square feet to do. So two and a half pounds times 2.5. What is that? Two and a half, five, six and a quarter pounds. That's what I need. Six and a quarter pounds of this product to put across the entire lawn. That is going to acidify the lawn. Uh, it, is going to, uh, it is going to fertilize the lawn. Um, but because it's such a small dose, I don't think it's going to be that detrimental. As you can see, my grass is starting to get green enough uh, that it will be able to use the nitrogen, especially on a low dose like that. All right, so that right there is 5.15 pounds. So that's another 20, 20% less than I just said. I'm just going to go with that, a bowlful. because I really want to make sure that I'm not heavy-handed in any area. Uh, I'm going to spread this on the lowest setting possible on my spreader, so it's going to come out really slow. Actually, come to think of it, I need to set it higher. The granules won't go through. So I'm going to set it up a little bit more. 
that way the granules will grow through. And I'm just gonna go around the yard. It might take like four passes across the whole yard to spread it out, but I want it to be thin. Uh, and I don't want it bunched up in any one area. I don't want to overload any certain area of my lawn with too much fertilizer. All right, if anyone is, I don't know, keeping track of the math here, I basically just put down 0.43 uh, pounds of nitrogen per thousand square foot on my lawn. That's probably about half a dose, maybe slightly more than half a, half a dose that I would put down on any regular fertilizing or any regular feed. Here, you can actually see the granules. I don't even know if you can see it on the camera. Like right there, there, there. They're evenly distributed. If you can't see this, I apologize. I can't do anything about it. But anyway, 2,500 square foot has about 4.3 pounds of nitrogen spread on it. Uh, again, it's not for the purpose of feeding the lawn. It's for the purpose of acidifying the soil. Uh, because it's a low nitrogen dose, uh, the grass should be able to take it up and use it um, effectively without any danger and it will immediately acidify the soil that way later on when I go and I put down uh, micronutrients and other kind of fertilizer products the slightly acidified soil will allow for better plant uptake of those nutrients and that's exactly what I, I want a little bit later in April maybe by the first of uh, May I'll be applying soil sulfur because my soil temperatures will be high enough that my microbial life will start being able to break that stuff down. I still got work ahead of me. I gotta run off to the store, pick up some more peat moss and some more worm castings so that I can fill in all of the other plugs. And then I'm gonna water all of this in. Uh, probably within about a week or so, a lot of this grass is gonna start growing. So I'm gonna have to start cutting it pretty quickly. Really, like seriously, right up in here. That's that video all about the different ways of acidifying your soil. Not everybody needs to acidify their soil, but if your soil is in that pH 7 to 8 range, your lawn will benefit from having soil that is on the lower end of the pH spectrum. Take a look at that video. I go into how this stuff works. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in another video down the road.